right, party people. So as of today, in January of 2023, these are the cheapest double stack 1911s, AKA 2011s that you can currently get right now. And this is a double stack 1911 slash 2011 that I put together for $300 less. And that begs the question of, does cheaper mean just as good as some of the higher end 2011s that are around? Or does it mean that they're hunks of junk? So welcome back party people. Hope you guys are doing awesome today. So in today's video guys, what I wanted to do was not only compare the Springfield Armory Double Stack 1911 to the one that I put together, but we're also going to compare the five inch model to the four and a quarter inch model that I have right here. And then we're going to go over some things that a lot of people haven't really addressed in their videos of their Springfield prodigies. I'm going to make a very, I guess, bold statement, so to speak. I don't know if it's bold or not. I think the Springfield Prodigy is the Glock of 2011s. For those of you that play with Glocks, you'll know what I'm talking about, but we're gonna be talking about why here in a little bit. Oh, and just an FYI guys, if you see anything in today's video that you wanna check the price of or see where things are in stock, first link in the video description. I'll also pin that link in the comments section. Now, before we get too far into this video, I wanted to tell you quickly why I think the Springfield Prodigy is probably the most important 2011 to come out since the invention of the 2011. For those of you guys who watched my build series that I did on this jerry-rigged version, in that video series, I took a 100% frame, I bought a bunch of Rock Island parts off of eBay, and I fitted them all together and we made ourselves a 2011. And for those of you guys that watched that video series, there was a part in the very first video where I said, the one thing that bothers me about the 2011 market was that there was no affordable options. Thus, there was a hole in the market. Now, some of you guys might leave in the comments down below, hey man, you're forgetting something. What about the Rock Island Armory TAC Ultra double stack? Well, this is a double stack 1911, but this one isn't modular. The difference between a 1911 and a 2011 is the grip and the frame are two separate pieces, and you can swap out these grips and put different ones on there with different textures and different weights. This one is all one single piece. And there's not very many aftermarket upgrades, even including new grip panels. There's like one or maybe two companies max that make grip panels for these. And so if there's something about this gun that you don't like, you're kind of stuck with it. And these cost anywhere from about $700 to $900, kind of depending on where you pick them up. It does feel like about a seven or $800 gun in regards to 1911s and 2011s. So up until the release of Springfield Prodigy, there hasn't been an option for less than $2,000. Speaking of this gun right here, if you guys go to my channel and you start searching for this video series, you're gonna notice that the very first video that I had in this series, that video has since been deleted. In the series that I put on YouTube, I never put any instructions or how to's or anything, but YouTube deleted that first video claiming that I was teaching people how to put it together when all I did was an unboxing of the parts. That was it. I know a lot of you guys have probably been watching other YouTube channels right now, like 704 Tactical, Mr. Guns and Gear, and some other guys. And they've really been coming after the 2A community very hard in the year of 2022. They removed six or seven videos of mine last year alone. And that's the most videos that's ever been removed by YouTube in a single year since I started in 2016. So if you guys could do me a huge favor, if you hate censorship, and if you hate the fact that these uh, big platforms now are trying to remove Second Amendment content, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you think you're already subscribed, triple check because I've seen dozens of comments over the past few days of people claiming that they were subscribed, but somehow they were unsubscribed. And I ask you guys to do this for any Second Amendment channel that you watch on YouTube. This is why. When you hit the subscribe button on a particular video, it triggers the algorithm to push this video out to a newer and different audience that's never been exposed to Second Amendment content before. And so I've been doing this experiment over the past three months of asking people to subscribe on a video and it has really been working. So many people have been leaving comments saying, hey, you know, I didn't own a gun until I watched your channel. It inspired me to go out and pick one up and get some training. That's awesome. So I just wanted to give you guys a big shout out and say thank you because without you guys, these channels, my channel, other gun channels, we don't exist without you. 
So anyways, let's get back to the Prodigy. Now, when the Prodigies came out a few months ago, I wasn't on the list of cool kids to get one for review. And so this five inch model, I borrowed from my buddy, Mike, over at the Tactical Considerations YouTube channel. Thank you to him for letting me borrow this. And after shooting this one, I was very curious on how the four and a quarter inch would shoot. And so I pulled some strings and got a four and a quarter inch version sent out to me. When the Prodigies came out, I think they launched for about 1600 ish dollars. Now, as of today, when I go online and look, I've seen the four and a quarter inch for as low as $12.99, something like that. And I've seen the five inch as low as about 14 to 1500. So the good news is now that the hype is kind of over for the past couple of months, the prices have come down by a couple of hundred dollars, which is awesome. Which means if you pick this one up for about the 1300 ish mark, that's only about a hundred dollars more than I spent on putting this together. And this one doesn't have an optics mount. So if I wanted to send this off, get the optics mount cut into the slide, these two guns would be exactly the same price. Now the response to the Springfield Prodigy has been very interesting. There seems to be two main responses. The first response is, oh my God, I love it. I have to have it. Then you have people who are like, it's not as good as a staccato, bro. Why don't you just shell out the extra $600 and buy a staccato? Well, number one, if you bought a staccato C or a staccato P, with the optics plate version, they're not $600 more. They're closer to $1,000 more. Big difference. Now that these prices have come down, staccatos are officially about $1,000 more. And there's a lot that you could do to these for less than $1,000 to make them just as good, if not a little bit better than a staccato. So Springfield was very smart because by lowering the price, they lowered the barrier of entry. So this is a gateway drug to the four and $5,000 2011s. But let's quickly go over the specs. You can get it in any color that you want as long as that color is black. They only have two variants, a five inch variant and a four and a quarter inch variant. Um, the slides are a round top slide. If you're unfamiliar with 2011s, there's basically like two or three types. There's round top, flat top, and tri-top. It does have very nice and wide serrations on the rear and the front of the slide. Very easy to press check. The optics mounting system is modular optics. Basically, Springfield Armory partnered up with Agency Arms to create the optics plates. The optics plates are not included unless you buy the one that has the hex dragonfly, which don't buy the one with the optic included. It's just not worth it. But one thing I will tell you, the optics plate does include the rear sight pre-installed. Now, unfortunately, when the Prodigies first came out, none of the optics plates were available except for the one that comes with the hex dragonfly. And that kind of bummed a lot of people out. I would have been a little bummed too if I would have gotten this before the plates come out. But as of right now, a lot of the plates are out. The main plate that everybody wants, if it's the RMR, the SRO, and the Holosun 507C, 407C, those are available right now. And they only cost about $60, but they have plates for almost any optic that your little heart desires. Now, one thing that really did surprise me about the Prodigy is the barrel on these. They actually included a stainless steel bull barrel, but they did a reverse crown on the barrel, which typically only comes on higher end 2011s. And they got rid of the barrel bushing, which usually you only see on higher end 2011s. I think that was a really good job on their part. On the five inch variant, you get five slots for your Picatinny rail. On the four and a quarter inch model, you only get one slot. I thought that was kind of odd. Don't know why that is, but thankfully it'll fit pretty much any light that I wanna put on it. Right now I got the Enforce Wild 2. I think it's the Wild 2. And then over here, I got the Surefire X300, but either light will fit either gun. So it's not a big deal, but it, it is curious that they chose one Picatinny slot. If you know why, let me know down in the comments section. Uh, the trigger shoe is a, it looks like it's either a short or medium reached curved trigger. The interesting thing that I found about these triggers is on this five inch that I borrowed from my buddy, the trigger pull is about five and a half pounds, and it's a very weird trigger pull. It's one of the worst trigger pulls I've ever felt on a 1911 or 2011, and that's not an exaggeration. However, my four and a quarter inch pulls at 3.9 to four pounds, and it feels amazing. So I can't say 
whether or not the trigger is good in these. I have a sample size of two. I'd need like a third or a fourth sample to know what the trigger weight is. If you have one of these, let me know what your trigger weight is down in the comments so that we can get a rolling tally of what the average is. But this one, 3.9 to four pounds and it's nice and smooth and crisp. This one's five and a half pounds and it feels like you're pulling through a rock. The sights it includes are fiber optic, has a green front blacked out rear with the serrations in the back to prevent glare from like sunlight and things like that. And they are optic height sights, meaning you do get a good uh, about a one-third co-witness with it. That seems about perfect to me. Now, the guide rod is something that's very fascinating about this. Most of your 2011s come with a guide rod and you need a paper clip in order to put into a hole so you can remove it. This one came with a different one that uses an Allen wrench. And at first I was like, that's kind of cool. But now if I'm at the range and I'm wanting to swap springs around to test different spring rates, I gotta make sure I have a tool with me. But nonetheless, I don't think that this guide rod's any better or any worse than the one that uses the paperclip because both of them technically need a tool. Now at this price point of, you know, 14 to $1,500, I didn't expect them to include a toolless guide rod, but there are some aftermarket toolless guide rods available for both of these. The grip of this is polymer and it does have a very interesting texture and it does have a very slight finger groove on it and it's double undercutted. And I found this grip to be very pleasing to shoot and I found it to be very ergonomic. I can hang on to this really well even if my hands are sweating. Some people have stippled these, some people have swapped these out for different grips, but I'm actually really liking the factory grips so far. But there is a con to these that we'll go over when we get to the pros and cons list. It does have a nice lip that's on the front strap, and so your hands don't slide off and they're very, very easy to hang on to and reduce recoil with. Both the four and a quarter inch model and the five inch model include two magazines, one at 17, and they include a plus two version that holds 19. And then there's also an additional version that you can purchase separately that holds 26. The other interesting thing about these is they also work with the STI or Staccato magazines. And I did test it with both, which we'll cover when we go over what the shooting experience was like and whether or not I had any malfunctions or not. So now let's go over what the shooting experience was like. So on my buddy's gun here, I have 200 rounds. And then on the four and a quarter inch, I have 225-ish. I use Blazer Brass 115 grain, nine millimeter. And I tested it both with the OEM magazines as well as Staccato magazine. This one, zero mount functions for me. I talked to Mike at Tactical Considerations. I asked him if he had any problems with it and he didn't have any problems with it. Now the four and a quarter inch, I took this one out of the box. All I did was added lube because it's a 1911 platform. They need lube. I shot the standard OEM magazines and I used STI magazines. Never had a single mount function in the 225-ish rounds that I put through it. Now, I completely understand that 425 rounds between these two isn't enough for a complete review. I get that. This is more of a first impressions. Now, I know some people in the comments are gonna say, oh yeah, you're gonna say nice things because there seems to be this group of people out there in the comments that think everyone's a shill. I'm gonna be straight up with you. I don't really care if I piss off a company. So you take that as you will, whatever. Now, when I first shot this one, I had a hard time shooting this one at first because of the trigger. When I was out filming, I was filming for, with this one, which is the $4,000 one that I made a video on last month. My buddy handed this to me, said, hey, you should shoot this. And this one has a phenomenal trigger in it. And this one, not so much. And so you can actually see when I'm shooting this one for the very first time, I really struggled with catching a rhythm with it. it. Seemed like I was having a bad range day altogether, but it wasn't that. It was just, it threw me off on how heavy this trigger is for a 1911. Now, once I put a hundred or so more rounds through it, I started getting used to it. It got a little bit easier, but the trigger still annoys the crap out of me. When I compared it to this gun, I noticed that this one felt like it had a lighter recoil than my home built one. And then I took them apart and realized that this one had a heavier spring in it. So what I did at the range, I took the spring out of this guy, put it in this guy, and then this one started feeling exactly the same as this one in regards to recoil impulse. So now let's talk about concealed carry and let's talk about holsters that are available for it. So if you guys remember when I reviewed this 2011, this thing weighs like four pounds almost when it's fully loaded. And then you get a second magazine, put it in here. I mean, it's like three or four pounds and this thing is very heavy. Um, but this is the tier one MSP holster. It fits any gun that has a Surefire X300 attached to it. And so the five inch model, when this thing's fully loaded, it's definitely not that bad. It's obviously not as heavy as this guy. So this thing conceals like a dream in a jeans and a t-shirt, especially if you just pull your shirt down like that. 
Um, I have no problem concealing it. Full size, five inch model with an extra mag. And then it's even better with the four and a quarter inch, as you can imagine. Now, I'm not really big on carrying guns with external safeties, but if you are, it would feel really good, especially if you appendix carry. I was looking on the website for tier one. Because this is a universal holster, the inside is very wide. They do make the Axis Elite, which is a more form-fitted holster. They make it for both sizes of Prodigies, and they make them for the Surefire X300A, X300B, and the Streamlight TLR7. So I'll have links over at the parts list if you wanna check out those holsters, just in case. So let's go over the pros and the cons of the Prodigy real quick. Then we're gonna get into how much these things cost to upgrade to make them basically just as good, if not a little bit better, than a staccato. But what are the cons? Con number one is on both variants of the five inch as well as the four inch, on the back of the mainspring housing, there is a tiny little lip down there and it is very sharp and it digs into your hand right here and it hurts, which I think can be eliminated with either a file. You could file it down, put some aluminum black on it, make it black again, or you could just put a magwell on it, which is the next con. I do wish it did come with a magwell. I know that you know the staccatos don't even come with a magwell, but it would be kind of a nice feature just to have to get rid of that sharp edge. I don't like that the guide rod needs an Allen wrench to be removed um, because if you're out in the field shooting and you're trying different spring weights and you forget your tool, then you're SOL. But then again, I could forgive it because of the price point. I didn't expect it to come with a toolless guide rod anyway. The next con is the inconsistent trigger pull between the two models. As I mentioned earlier, the full size one right here has a heavy, crunchy-ish 5.5 pound pull. This one has a very nice, smooth, crisp, four pound pull. So I do wish that they would keep the trigger consistent. I don't know if it's just these two models because I don't have any others to test. And then the last con is that these have injection molded internals. This has kind of been a con for a lot of people because the staccatos don't use MIM or MIM injection molded parts internals on them, which is part of the reason why these are able to be affordable. So if they didn't use MIM parts, these wouldn't be as affordable as they are. However, most of our polymer carry guns that we all trust our life with have MEM parts in them. And so I can't really fault them too bad because MEM parts work great for Glock. They work great for Smith & Wesson. So I don't foresee it being a problem with these, but the reason that people were kind of mad about that is 2011s are known to be smooth. And I'm guaranteed that this trigger problem right here probably has to do with a burr on the trigger bar or on the disconnector because it's injection molded. I'm sure if I went in here and just filed it off, it could smooth out, but because this isn't my gun, I'm not gonna do that. Number one, I already talked about this. They're very affordable, relatively speaking, in regards to 2011s. Second pro, modular optics. You can get the different plates to fit any optic on here that you want. The next pro is in addition to having modular optics, I like that the optics plates maintain the rear sight. Sometimes on guns, they'll delete the rear sight. And I'm glad that they maintain it, and I'm glad that the plates include the rear sight with the optics plate. The grip feels amazing. Uh, I love the texture, I love the ergos. It's very easy to mitigate recoil with. Pro number four is relatively affordable magazines. Their magazines, it just kind of depends on where you find them. I've seen their magazines for as cheap as $35, but the max price that I've seen is $60, and that's for all the different capacities. They're all the same price. Which leads me to the next pro, which is they're versatile enough to be used with the STI slash Takato magazines. The next pro is I really like the minimalist look about this with the really nice serrations. It's very easy to press check, and the slide is incredibly smooth. And then my last pro is they're easy to upgrade. Now, earlier in the video, I said that I felt like the Springfield Prodigy was the Glock of 2011s. The reason I say that, these 2011s are cheap enough that you can do a lot of upgrades to them, but they're not so expensive that you're afraid to scratch it or change something out in it. You know what I mean? Sometimes when you get a gun like this one that's quite pricey, you might be afraid to tinker with it. But with these, it's like, all right, well, if I screw it up, it's gonna cost me 30 bucks to fix it. The other good news is there is a ton of aftermarket support already for this because there's always been aftermarket support for 2011s. Now let's talk about the cost to upgrade these things, right? Like you might be thinking to yourself, man, this thing's gonna be quite expensive to upgrade. Actually, it's not. The Magwell's average price are about $60. If you want a new trigger in it, those average between $30 and $60, depending on which one you get, where you get it from. If you want to get a new hammer, 
and sear and disconnector and a spring that aren't made out of mem parts, that will be quite pricey. I would get the EGW ignition kit. Those are about $130. A toolless guide rod, there is one from Atlas Gunworks for the four and a quarter inch. They're out of stock, but they cost $60. And then for the five inch model, Dawson Precision makes a toolless guide rod, and those are $100. Now, let's talk about compensators, ports, and all that crazy stuff. There are comped barrels available for these already. I think from DS Gunworks or something like that. They cost about $395. Then if you decide to get it ported, there are two companies that I know of at the moment that are doing ports. One is Vulcan Machine Works and the other one is Monsoon Tactical. They both do ports, but they do them in a different way. Those range from $300 up to $385, depending on which company you go with. And then one of my favorites is the DSX conversion from DS Gunworks, where they take a five inch model and they essentially turn it into a Staccato XC that has an integrated compensator. They relocate this dovetail back, and I think that one is the one to get, but that one's obviously the most expensive. That one's $1,100. But like I said, average price I would say is $1,450 for these. Average price for a Staccato of this same setup with the optics is $2,500. So we're playing with about $1,000. But if you did all those upgrades that I just mentioned, minus the ports and compensators, it's only about 348 bucks. That's not bad at all. When you include the price of the gun at 1450, that's a total of $1,835. Now, if you wanted to say, go with all those internal parts that I just talked about, magwells and all that, and add a comped barrel, you're looking at a total price, including the price of the gun, of $2,193. If you went with ports, for example, on the low side, you're looking at 2100. On the high side, you're looking at 2200. You know, all those little internals and getting the ported slide, that would make this a little bit better than a Staccato P, in my humble opinion. And then if you went with the DSX conversion that basically turned this into a Staccato XC, including the price of the gun, the triggers, the ignition kit, the magwells, all that stuff, you're looking at a total price of $2,898, which is about $1,500 to $1,600 less than a Staccato XC. Now, I'm not saying that this is good as a Staccato XC. If you do all those things, I'm just giving you a reference of prices. So knowing what I know now, do I think the Prodigy is good? And would I buy it with my own money knowing what I know now? Yeah, I totally would, especially since the prices have been coming down. Personally, I like the four and a quarter inch better than I like the five inch. Even if this five inch had a trigger as good as this one, there's something about the balance of the four and a quarter inch that just fits me better. And because the price of these has come down so much, I would prefer picking one of these up than putting one of these together. Just an FYI, like I do like these so much because the price is so low that it's almost better to just buy this one as it is to piece one of these together because of the time that you have to put into these. And in the future, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give this back to my buddy, the five inch version. I'm gonna get my own five inch and we're gonna go through a series of upgrades with both of these. I'm gonna try to do that DSX conversion with this one and then I'm probably gonna do ports with this one. I just wanna see how good we can make them. Then I'm gonna try, I've already talked to the people at Staccato, they are willing to send out some guns for review so we can do a comparison. At the end of the day, guys, it really doesn't matter what I think. I can only report what my experiences were with a sample size of two. I want you guys to remember that. Sample size of two. There are people with wildly different experiences. Now, this one was one of the first released batches. This one was one of the mo more recent batches. In my opinion, they seem to be ironing out all the kinks. So keep that in mind if this is something that you're considering to get. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think. It matters what you guys think. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Also, if you wanna see a complete review on this monstrosity of a gun, best gun I've ever shot in my life, go check out this video right up here. But until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.